Hello, and welcome to this service of virtual Christian worship. My name is Reverend John Van Nuys. I'm the pastor at Wabash Avenue Presbyterian Church here in Crawfordsville, Indiana. On behalf of our church family, our governing board, the session, our deacons, and everyone in our congregation, it's a joy to welcome you to this service of virtual worship. Although we are separated spatially due to the pandemic, we are nonetheless one spiritually in Christ. Where two or more are gathered, God is present. And indeed we are gathered, and God is present. Therefore, let us prepare our hearts to come before the Lord in worship. Please join me in our call to worship. Give praise to God. Praise the Lord, for it is God who saves. It is God who forgives. It is God who delivers. Give thanks and praise to the Lord. Let us worship God. Our opening hymn is sung by our choir director, Jenny Swick. confession. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavily laden, says our Savior, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Let us ask God to forgive us. Join me now in our prayer of confession. Gracious and loving God, you live for us. We have not lived for you. You have forgiven us. We have not forgiven others. You have loved us. We have not loved ourselves, and we have not loved one another. Take pity on us, O God, and forgive us. Help us to forgive. Help us to live for you. Help us to love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now continue in this time of silence to confess our sins. Amen. Hear the good news. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Jesus Christ came to save sinners. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. 
Join now, please, with me in our prayer for illumination. O oh God, open our hearts to your word this day. Tell us the truth we need to hear. Show us the way we need to follow and grant us the life we need to live. Amen. Our gospel lesson today comes from Mark's gospel, chapter 6, verse 31. So listen now for God's word as it speaks to you. Jesus said to his disciples, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Back in the day when you wanted to watch a movie, you'd go to Blockbuster and you'd read a video cassette which you would take home and place in and watch on your VCR. Blockbuster movies all came in a plastic rectangular package. They had a picture of the movie on the front and then invariably somewhere on that package there, was the, there were these words, be kind, rewind. Translation, take time once you've watched the movie to rewind the video cassette so that it's ready for the next viewer. Be kind, rewind. Well, let's update that slogan for this pandemic. Let's update it to be kind, unwind. Translation, be kind in these tough times to others and to yourself. Be kind, unwind. Take time to unwind. Take time in this pandemic to breathe. Take time to relax. Take time to take care of yourself because God loves you. Since God loves you, and since you should love those things and the people who God loves, you should love yourself as well. This pandemic has been plaguing us now for six months, and there's still no end in sight. In addition to the death toll and the economic toll, there is also an emotional toll which affects us all. Uncertainty, anxiety, and isolation are wearying. Our coping skills are constantly being put to the test. Researchers say that substance abuse, eating disorders, mental illness, and domestic violence are all increasing. COVID-19 threatens us all physically and emotionally and spiritually. So, what should we do? In addition to taking care of ourselves physically by wearing masks in public, by maintaining social distance, and by following sound medical advice, we have to be just as intentional about caring for ourselves emotionally and spiritually. Here are some ideas about how you can do that. First, realize that God wants you to flourish. God wants you, you, to flourish. While Jesus does ask us to sacrifice our selfish ways in order to follow him in his selfless way, Jesus does not want us to suffer needlessly especially in a pandemic. Jesus wants us all to make it through this time and get to the other side alive. And for that to happen, we've got to cooperate with God to care for others and to care for ourselves. God wants us to love everyone, and everyone by definition includes you. God wants you to love yourself, to care for yourself, and to be kind to yourself. During a particularly stressful time, Jesus said to his friends, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place 
and get some rest. How can we follow Jesus' command to do that today? If you're beating yourself up because you aren't as productive as usual, how about cutting yourself some slack? After all, this is a pandemic. This is a worldwide, horrible, hard time. It's tough. So extend yourself some grace. Be patient with yourself and be patient with others by acknowledging that all of us are doing the best we can despite and during these extraordinary circumstances. What's more, God commands us to rest, abstaining from work so that God can recreate us is so important that it made God's top 10 list. It's in the Ten Commandments. Keeping Sabbath so that it can keep you is essential for your soul to be well and for your relationship to God and with others to be healthy and alive. Now, keeping Sabbath isn't something that necessarily is confined to one calendar day a week. How can you keep Sabbath in the pace and places of your lives each day? What blessing do you think God is hoping to give you as you rest in him? How is God inviting you to keep Sabbath? I think Sabbath happens when our soul is fed and we know we are blessed. Well, what feeds your soul? Whatever it is, maybe it's being in nature or loving on your pet or enjoying the music you really love. Those are the heaven sent paths to joy, refreshment and peace. Those are the Sabbath paths that Jesus wants to walk with you today. When I worked at a psychiatric hospital, a wise nurse told me, John, if you want to help anybody, you have got to practice good self-care. Without that, you won't do anyone any good. And what's more, you'll end up cheating yourself out of the good blessing that God wants to give you. She was right. You know, sometimes God's blessings arrive like Amazon packages. They just appear. Here's another Amazon package. Instantly and effortlessly, this Amazon box is right there on your front doorstep. But you know what? Most of the time, most of God's blessings don't come like that. Instead, most of God's blessings arise like produce from a backyard garden. That goodness comes from the garden thanks to God and thanks to our faithful tending and tilling the soil, which takes time and intention and patience. As we tend and till our soul, which is the seedbed of our life, God will cause good things to arise within us and for us. Sufficient rest, for example, gives rise to patience. Patience gives rise to compassion. And compassion, love, is the most powerful force in the universe. Self-care isn't irrelevant. Self-care isn't selfish. Self-care is the simple, essential recognition that we are mortal. We're not supermen. We're not Wonder Woman. We need to rest. We need to care for ourselves. In order to be good stewards of God's gift of life, we need to take care of our bodies. Where, after all, Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And you know what? As we do that, as we take care of ourselves 
and the Spirit has room to work within our lives, good gifts from the Spirit arise within our lives, and they ripple out in blessing to our neighbors and community and to the world. What can you do today to take care of the life God has given you? Recovery meetings, good counselors, antidepressant medications, meditation techniques, and other wise, gentle habits. These won't spare you from tough times, which invariably come to us all. But they will make those times so much easier and your life so much happier and your connection to God and your walk with Christ so much stronger. They will shape your life for God and they will change the world for good. The good news is that God loves you. You. God wants you, yes you, to love others. And yes, God wants you to love yourself. In these tough times, join God in loving the world. Say yes to Jesus as he invites you to rest and to simply be with him. Let us hear, respond, and live. Let us pray. Holy, gracious, and loving God, we are thankful for this day. We are thankful for the miracle of life, for the breath you have given us within our lungs, for the energy in our bodies, for the everyday miracles that are around us that we so easily and often overlook. Oh God, give us eyes to appreciate those blessings and hearts to share those blessings. Help us to love as you love. Help us to love everyone, even ourselves. Help us to take good care of the life that you have given us, that we may serve you faithfully and well, and enjoy this life and you perfectly forever. Lord, we pray for our suffering world in this pandemic. We pray that you will bless and guide the researchers who are working on a cure, speed their efforts, and help us all come to a day when this specter of death is removed from us. We ask, Lord, your blessings upon our President Donald, our Governor Eric, and our Mayor Todd. Bless all who are in positions of authority, giving them your wisdom, and lead them, we pray, that they might lead us, all of us, out of this time of peril and into a good, abundant place of blessing. We ask, Lord, your grace for all essential workers, for those who are working in the grocery lines, for those delivering food, for those who work in uh, the helping professions, O oh God. Be with them and keep them safe as they share their blessings and healing with us. We pray, Lord, for all who are grieved in spirit. Lord, be with them as they mourn. Lord, for all who are troubled in spirit and mind by uh, economic difficulties and uh, this pandemic threat, we pray, Lord, that you will transform their um, chaos, their anxiety, and their fear. Transform that with your peace and purpose and life and love. We ask, Lord, that you would bless and pour out your healing blessings upon all who are ill. We ask, Lord, that you would be with all who teach and all who seek to learn, that our schools may be safe places for growth to happen. We pray that you will add wisdom to knowledge and character to growth and virtue to know-how 
so that all persons who are students may grow to become who you created them to be. Lord, the Montessori School of Crawfordsville has begun teaching and holding class in our church building, and we pray a blessing upon Margot and her teachers and those students. We ask you to lift up all who attend recovery meetings in our church, for all who come to the fish clothing pantry seeking uh, what they need to, to live. Lord, we pray that our church and all of our hearts may be beacons of hope and grace and life and love for all in our community and beyond. Oh God, we come to you today with prayers for Alan, Alger, Becky and Jim, Kevin and Laura, Betsy, Betty, David, Dick, Jenny, Jim and his family, Jim and Virginia, Judy, Lily's friend, Dakota, Linda, Lloyd, Marty, Nanette, Roger. And Lord, we come asking your grace upon these additional persons and concerns that we now name silently before you. Oh God, we thank you for receiving our prayers and for receiving us as your forgiven, redeemed, and loved children. Unite us now in one voice in the prayer that our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is sung by Jenny Swick.
Receive now the charge and the benediction. I charge us all to remember that God is love. God loves everyone, and everyone includes you. Be grace-giving to others. Be gentle and grace-giving with yourself. Take on Christ's yoke and learn from him. He is meek and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord turn a shining face toward you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen.